Hey, listen to Commander Hookup Podcast, episode 384. I'm Brando. I'm here with Ryan, and we're going to continue our review of Commander Masters by talking about the pre-cons. Now, hit our theme song! Hey, Ryan. We're back for yet another whirlwind adventure. How you doing? Good. What is going down? Whole ton is going down. We're back for another day in a row. It's the same day for us. We're going to talk about the Commander Masters Super Duper Ultra Premium Precon decks and how awesome they are and how worth they are and how everybody's just going to get them and play them because they're so good. But before we get to any of that, we have to thank our official business daddies, FusionGamingOnline.com, their source for all your gaming needs. If you do want to get the pre-cons, you can go to FusionGamingOnline.com, FusionG as I call them, mm-hmm. and use CCO Summer promo code, get 5% off. Which will help. Yes, and if you're a first-timer new to the nation, or you want to start a burner email account and <laughs> use the code again because it's a one-time <laughs> use, you go... And use CCO Perks promo code, and that's going to get you 10% store credit kickback onto your Fusion account. They'll credit you with 10% of what you spend back. That's like getting 10% off your order. That's pretty good. Yeah. And if you're going to get like 15% off of, off of an order, ordering these decks all at once, you're going to want to do that. That's a good deal. Yeah, for sure. Uh CCO perks, one time use only, gotta spend hundred bucks, but you can, last time I checked and did it, you you can piggyback double team DP with the promo codes. Correct. Uh, do you Google or don't Google, Google away, man. Google That's Google away, yeah. yeah. Google away. DP can stand for several things. Diet Pepsi, my third favorite drink. What's wow. your what's your second favorite drink? I know uh, what your first favorite drink is it's beer. You know what? Diet Mountain Dew, third favorite drink. Diet Pepsi, second favorite drink. Uh huh. I don't know, Does man. Does water count? No, water Body is not. Waters, a, yeah, water's yeah. not on the thing. No, water is not a a drink that you rank. Yeah, you only drink water because you have to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody drinks water because it's their favorite. Okay? And if you if you do, get at us in the comments because I don't believe you. Hey, water's good though. It's fine. Water's good. It's hey, uh, what about what about orange juice with or without pulp? Which which camp are you in i'm a minimal pulp guy minimal pulp okay let yeah. us know in the comments i'm a lots of pulp guy. yeah i don't like could, lots could of you pulp. imagine brando and i were on the opposite page about something no <laughs> but we're still homies <laughs> on the internet what the f- what in the mother ass jeez oh, so all right well i guess so we're gonna read some legends yep. we're gonna talk some overall deck construction and let's just start here hold on we, i've we've been... got a little bit of podcasting business oh. Even on the bonus episodes, got a little bit of podcast I've fitness. been percolating on this sliver deck for so long, Ryan. Let's do the business. Well, we know that you like it. We know that you bought it because you love it because you're a sliver weeb. You simp on sliver queen. And you... you... Let's do the business, Ryan. Let's do the business. Well, we're going to talk about this deck. When Uncle Brando plays his sliver queen or his sliver precon deck that he pre-ordered Urgh. at... The face-to-face games open in Saskatoon on August 5th. Yep. It's going to be tons of fun because the deck is so, of the highest quality. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> it's such a good deck. We're going to be at face-to-face open Saskatoon August 5th. There is a Commander mm-hmm. Masters CCO sealed tournament with fantastic prizes. Amazing prizes. And that we will win. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm playing to win them, man. I want to win. I'm playing to win them. I want. Sh- I'll share it with I you. I want to play and I'll win. I'll share em. the prizes with you. If I win, I'll buy you a beer. It's a pretty good deal. Jeez. It's the best drink. We just. <laughs> <went over> to- <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy you a CCO booster pack. Um, I'll be playing. If you haven't bought your commander packages yet, this is what Kelly, the face-to-face guy, told me to say. Mm-hmm. If you haven't bought yet, he activated the code. C C O when you check out with your commander package. Buy a package, get the vouchers, get the swag like the sleeves and the bag of the playmat and all the stuff that you get, right? Yeah. It's not gonna get you a discount, but it is gonna get you a free little gift. Yeah. Like an extra voucher or like a game ticket. And you can cash that in on the entry fee the day of yeah. for the commander masters thing. To absorb some of the cost. As we talked about yesterday, yes. this set's very expensive. And while the Events are really cool. The 
the bar to entry is fairly high. Yeah. I think if you if you cash that in and get a couple really slick rips in your boosters, yeah. you'll come out ahead and you'll play in a fantastic tournament with your, your good friend Ryan and other CCO Nationalites from Saskatoon and area. And if you've already bought your commander package and didn't have an opportunity to use the code, come by the CCO booth. We're going to have lots of cool stuff to look at, merch, mm -hmm. games. We do all of that. We'll have a little... Uh, extra gift for you if you say that you didn't use the code and we'll we'll hook you up because some people guys. Have, have missed it i think there had been at the time that this was approved i think that there was 19 people that had bought commander packages who didn't have the opportunity to use the code yes so stop by the booth and we'll get you fixed up correct because that's how the goons from saskatoon do it that's how we do things and contrary if to public belief we're not as goony as yeah as people think yeah also, also, we talked about it yesterday. We'll mention it here again. If it's if you're worried about going to an event because you're going to just get skunked on and dunked on and wrecked up, we are the ones who are in charge of some of these commander pod firings, and we will make sure that you do not end up being burned down to the ground in flames because we want to make sure everybody's having a good time. Yeah. And if you've ever been to an event or heard about anybody that's been to an event run by your boys... We make sure everybody's having a good time. And I aggressively make sure people are having fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Brandon does the cartoon thing. Hey, are you scumbagging? Hey, are you pub stomping? He does the thing where the guy's like held by his belt and the collar of his shirt and he gets tossed out into the mud and lands on his face like Gaston in, in uh, Beauty and the Beast. Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. Or he does the other thing where the guy gets his butt kicked and all you see is the butt kicker's foot out the door. Yeah. And the guy gets like the big whap thing you know like the star when the contact is made and just his butt is flying through the air yes. and also lands in the mud correct yes yes we make sure everybody's having a good time because that's what we're there for and it's also what we're there for so if you've been oh. if you're on the fence you're him and han quit it and just come because it's going to be fun it's free to walk in the door you can buy your entry passes and game vouchers and stuff when you're there and if you just, hadn't, if you haven't done it already yeah. with the primo code, yeah. primo code, promo yeah. code. Well, it is primo. Yeah. But just, <laughs> just, just come. They're fun, right? This is a game. It's supposed to be fun. Oh, Play it yeah. with friends. Make some new friends. Meet some new people. I'm sure that there are people that we haven't seen in a long time. I'm looking at Jen and Jesse and Callum oh. and all those people we haven't seen in a long time. Yeah. I expect to see all of them there. And I bring up Jesse in particular because he just had a new baby. Congratulations, my friend, Jesse. Yeah. Like F.U. Jesse or New, Je new Jesse? New Jesse. New Jesse. I'm like, yes. F.U. Jesse did not have a new baby. I just, yeah, but, I just seen him. But New New Jesse did. And yes. it, he showed me a picture on the internet the other day. Oh, yeah. And he was wearing those those little mitts that you put on them so don't scratch your own oh, eyeballs yeah, out yeah, and stuff. Yeah. Had little dinosaurs on them. It was adorable. Oh, so yeah. Does he play Calamax? Probably will. Probably. Betty does. Do you think I can tap his baby sideways to crew a vehicle? Abs I would 100% allow it. Yes. <laughs> his car seat is his vehicle. <laughs> Yeah, but, super cool. But good on that. That's that's fantastic news. I love to hear that. Very kind of much stuff. so. Speaking of going places and meeting new people, we've got the CCO experience coming up. Yep. Las Vegas, Nevada, United States, um, Earth. We have a pool. There's a pool. The backyard is beach themed, and we are going to be treating the um, the patrons and the CCO detox members to the the weekend. We've got a couple chefs. We're a we're pool party. We're doing some some prizes, and uh, our our good friends and business daddies at Fusion Gaming are sending us a little bit of stuff. Ooh. And if you ever want to become part of a CCO experience, they're fantastic. Me and Mac, he's one of the he's one of the planners in in Patreon and in Discord. He's one of the planners, yeah. and he's come up with some good little things and good little open flippy type tournament settings. Oh, Team Ryan versus Team Brando. Oh, yeah. So you mean I get to beat you again? Well, you've never beat me, so... I've beaten you when every you time. When you mean again, you mean for the first time. I've beaten you every time we've ever competed. If you ever want to be part of these, you go to patreon.com slash CCO podcast, you pledge there, you get in the Discord, and you follow us on Twitter, at CCO podcast, at CCO Brando, so you see all of the places, that is Twitter, Discord, and the Patreon Messenger service... You see all the places where we announce when these are happening. Mm -hmm. And the final thing I'll say, because we haven't mentioned it very much, coffee.com slash CCO podcast. If you want to make any donations or buy anybody in the nation a beer. Yes. Not a coffee. Yeah, Unless we... you explicitly say it's for coffee because you know the person likes coffee. Like that's Keel. That's Keel. Keel, likes Keel. Maybe, maybe A.A. Ron. 
Yeah, Aiden likes coffee too, I think. Oh, yeah, he does, but he would definitely drink a beer before coffee. <laughs> yes. Well, let's be real. Keel would do. Yes, so would Keel, yes. <laughs> Keel would definitely take beer over coffee. Yes, yes. Even yes, though he, he is a coffee snob. Him and Aiden got to, like, get together and do, like, a like a coffee showdown. Like, who can make the most hipster coffee? Oh, shit. That who would... would do it? Who would do? Who would snob the other one harder? Oh my god! Who would scumbag and you got to kick him out like a cartoon character <laughs> harder, but with coffee? <laughs> yeah, the answer yes. is yes. <laughs> All right, Ryan. Okay, what do we got? Let's let's do it, man. Oh, this sliver deck. Hey, you're stretching my shirt. That hurts. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> so, sorry, I'm very passionate you about. You would have this. seen that on YouTube, which you should be watching. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to be passionate about that, but you're using all your passion. I- on this fucking sliver deck. You're using all your passion like you're crucifying Jesus Christ. I was so excited, Ryan. I know. I was so the excited. I pre-ordered I the deck. Pre-ordered. I prepaid for the deck. It's even selling at a premium because so many sliver simps like myself ordered it assuming it was going to be so cool. You know what? You know what? Recognizing that you're a simp is part of the solution. I understand. I'm a big Sliver fan. I like them a lot. They're my favorite thing. They were the thing that kind of got me excited and into magic in the first place. Mm. Sliver Queen, first rare I've ever opened in a pack I bought with my own money. Ooh. Right? I still have that very card painted by my good friend Ryan mm. as the as the, the helm of my oldest, most cherished deck. Oh. Right? I love Slivers, and I was so excited. I see... Sliver Grave Mother, this is going to be so good. I took a picture and previewed it on Twitter and Instagram. Right, I was so pumped, and now I am less pumped. And I'm, Facebook. Like, I'm happy there's some new arts on some classic slivers that Predator bullshit can get out of here. Well, let's let's um let's read Sliver Grave Mother, and you can give us your take on the card. And once we get past the seven new commanders, we'll okay. maybe. Do, address the pre-cons as a whole oh my god so read it because the card isn't bad the card is actually good yeah. sliver grave mother is a 6-6 six, six for wooberg mm-hmm. the legend rule does not apply to slivers you control wait well, that's kind of a big deal it has encore five which means you can pay five it comes back from the graveyard and you get a copy a token of it for each opponent you have so you get three of them that come back and and because the legend rule doesn't apply it doesn't immediately die correct so if it were to die you pay five Five again, five colorless this time. Mm-hmm. So if it was in your graveyard and it was not your commander, maybe mm-hmm. you can just encore it if you milled it, and then you'd get s- three probably six sixes yeah. with um, haste when it has encore, right? So Correct. you can immediately attack with it. Or do they enter tapped and attacking? No, they they come into play. Oh, then you can do with them what you will. Yes, you to can attack, attack or not. You cannot. It's it's yeah. fine. Okay. You also have to remove the creature from the graveyard too. So like if it's your commander, you play it, it dies, you encore it, you have three of them, you swing it in, and then instead of exiling it, you put it back in the zone. I don't think you've actually read the whole card yet. I have not. It also gives, as slivers are wont to do, it gives all slivers encore X, where X is their mana cost. Ooh, so you could mill all your slivers and then get them all back. Yes. So it kind of, it kind of, just hear me out here, it kind of does sort of what Sliver Queen does. In that you pay generic mana to get a sliver. Yes. And in this that way it does. Yes. Does th- that as well. You pay generic mana to get three slivers. The the catch is they have to be in your graveyard. Yes. So it kind of does the same thing. It's a six six. Uh, no, Sliver Queen's a seven seven. Right? Sure is. She seven, is seven a house. For Wooberg, and, and this is a beautiful. six six for Wooberg. Yes. So this goes into Sliver decks. It does. There's, I'm going to play it in my Sliver yeah, Queen deck. Yeah, there's definitely no qualms about that. Now, would you, again, pay whatever you paid for the entire pre-con, or would you just... I would get the Sliver Grave get, Mother and get the, card. the rest of them. You would probably buy the other Slivers as singles as well, yeah, like one, the new ones. Once their value just totally tanks. If you're pre-ordering, don't pay $30 for those slivers. Do not. No. They are not $30. Unless you go to fusiongamingonline.com. Then then do it and use our promo code. Yes, that please would be great. do that as <laughs> that well. That would be great. Buy yeah. lots of them. <laughs> yes, that would be very helpful. But if you're not going to do that, like just just can wait. Yeah. Okay, just wait. Sliver Grave Mother is going to be probably going to remain a pricey card, but yeah, those other uh, five are they're not. So let's talk about that for a minute. Okay, so if I want 
the etched foil, does that come in the pre-con? No. You will get one traditional foil yep. in the pre-con. And one thick daddy. And one thick daddy. Or, or one fat ass mama. Yeah, in fat this mama. Case. Yeah. You can get that's, the... That's the thick card stock card is what we mean. Yes. The and coasters. You, and you can get a etched foil one or an extended art one in collector boosters. Okay. And... Can I get extended art foil in collector boosters? Do I, we know this yet? If there's going to be an extended art foil, the odds are they're going to show up in those two card packs that you get in the back of a commander the deck. Collector booster sample pack yeah. in the back of a precon. Yeah. Those, okay. That's probably where those are going to be. That's if why the they one exist. ring from Lord of the Rings is a thousand dollars because the only place to get it is in the collector sample packs in the precons. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah, that's why some of those just really weird. Like, why is this one dollar card in extended art foil? Why is it a hundred dollars? Mm-hmm. That's why. Yes, is because they're in very, very, very few things. So. Okay, so maybe that's where this is going to be. If anybody knows, either hit us up on Twitter, get us in Discord, or let us know in the comments below on YouTube. Because you never and... know who's going to be where when it comes to that kind of stuff. So if you wanted the extended art one in what I'm assuming is not foil, yes. Hundred bucks, dang, mm, that's lots. But dang. compared to Sliver Queen, uh, Sliver Legion, Sliver Overlord, Sliver, the first Sliver, <laughs> uh, man, what other? What am I missing? The uh, Dark Steel Sliver, whatever the hell that one's called. No, no, no. I'm thinking like the five color commander yeah, ones. That's yeah, me too. Dark Steel Sliver. It, it it's the one that gives them indestructible. I just can't. Hive Lord, there it is. Hive Lord, Sliver yeah. Hive Lord. Oh yeah, Hive Lord. Um, is ninety five dollars on par? Uh, more than most uh, of them. Let me let me ref- adjust question my leave. Sure. Um, sixty to a hundred dollars for this sliver. That's what That's you're on gonna, par. It's pretty on par. It's a, it's it's high par. Is there is there non five color legendary slivers? No. So if you want Not to build a, a sliver one. deck, you're either going to proxy or pay a minimum of sixteen dollars. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's brutal. Them Isn't sliver it? simps, eh? Isn't it? My it's, ass. And it's almost like they could have fixed that in this precon, but then they didn't. Well, it's funny that you mentioned that exact thing because we've got the Emrakul anagram lady. Oh yeah, Rukaramlil biologist. Yeah, let's read that how, one. How did I? Rukarumel. 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 Sure. The, the the let me dunk on it first. This one, is it's another generic five color good stuff commander that says the word sliver on it. Oh. But you know what? Well, people That's are gonna fine. people are gonna say, oh, it's a sliver commander because it says the word sliver on it. Now, let me hit you with this. <laughs> <clears throat> this card costs thirty five dollars. <laughs> Uh, truth, oh. that one probably will also maintain its value because this card is going to get played. It is really good. Let, let me give it a read. Yes. Tree Tree, that's uh, Irish for three. Yep. Human Wizard for Wooburg. Okay. You following me? Yeah, I am. Rue Caramel, biologist, enters the battlefield, cru- choose a creature type. Yep. Okay. Slivers you control and non-token creatures you control are the chosen type in addition to... There are other creature types. The same is true for creature spells you control and creature cards you own that aren't on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Also, three, tap, create a 1-1 one, one colorless sliver creature toke. So here's what that does for you. That lets you take any unsupported creature type yes. that you want to build a deck out of, and you do it here. And it makes it a... S- because you can support them with slivers. Because slivers have lords and abilities and keywords, and they do literal everything that you want any tribal deck to do, and you can build it around her. So what do I do? Do I okay? Let's say I want merfolk. Yep. Do I pick merfolk? Yeah. And I, I say merfolk because then all my merfolk are also are is become sliver. Yes. Ooh. Yeah. Do you like my use of the? present perfect tense <laughs> <laughs> all slivers is become merfolk yes okay so i could pick like crab yeah and just put all the sliver lords in and all my crabs are slivers and all my slivers are crabs yeah uh, that's pretty good it's pretty good everybody's who's playing the prismatic bridge for their five color tribal decks is now going to play this yeah it's a good card. Oh. It's a fine card. It's a great generic five color card. It's a great card. And it's got a cool picture on it. And it's 
we're assuming it's a it's a character that everybody likes, right? It's really cool. And it's in this it's in this liver deck. It's a great generic piece of thing. It's great. Every once in a while though, we need a bone like that. Like I'm thinking yeah. more phone the boundless. Yeah. Was the last bone that we got like that. Yeah. This time it lets everybody be Sliver Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Uncle Brando. Oh, Uncle Brando's Sliver Emporium. <laughs> I'm going to call up Uncle Brando. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Hey, Uncle Brando, do you have any slivers? He's like, do I have slivers? Man, I got I got I, the sli- I got this. What rhymes with sliver? Frick, nothing. God I got the it. slivers that'll make you quiver. <laughs> yeah, I got guys that'll cross your eyes. <laughs> I got burgers. I just got burgers. Got, oh, man. I got beers that'll make your <laughs> opponents fear. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There it is. Yeah, Uncle Brando Sliver Emporium. Give him a call. Only foils, though. <laughs> it, it's it's true. Only foils. Well, let's kick over to, to the rest of the commanders. We're talking about the new cards, and then we'll hit up the precons in general. And I promise we'll talk about the Sliver deck. Is that a, is that a plan? Mm-hmm. We're going to do those things that I said to? We are going to do all those things. Okay. Well, I'm going to go stop by at Uncle Brando Sliver Emporium, and then we'll be back. Okay. So we've talked about the two legends from the Sliver deck. Sure. Shall we move on to, where should we go next? Let's do Planeswalker Party once next. Sure, yeah, and I made a mistake. I said seven new legies. There's actually eight because Commodore Guff isn't a creature, but he can be your commandy. Yes, he can. Commodore Guff, we'll start there, is a five loyalty, four mana Planeswalker. I believe Jeskai is the color. Is blue, red, white? Yes, sir. At the beginning of your end step, put a loyalty counter on another target Planeswalker you control. That's just a static ability he has. Plus one, you get a 1-1 red red wizard creature token, easy for me to say, that taps for a red that can only be used to cast Planeswalker spells. Sure. That's a weird, I I think that's kind of weird. That's the first time we've ever seen that. And then it's got minus three, you draw X cards. And Commodore Guff deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of Planeswalkers you control. So this is Planeswalker dot deck. Yes. In Jeskai colors. Yes. My question is this. Okay. Because the card is good. And also, uh, Commodore Guff can be your commander. Says it at the bottom. Yes. My question is this. Are there other Planeswalker decks that we are used to playing? Like, they used to be Golos, right? You could do Golos. You could do Atraxa. Oh, yeah, yep, big yep, Super yep, Friends yep, one, yep, right? Yep, because you could proliferate. Yep. Okay. Um, I I'm, would suggest Atraxa Super Friends probably is the one. I think that you're probably right now. I'm looking at EDH, and I've got Karth the Lion, Asika Prismatic Bridge, Joda, Sisse, because she cares about legends. Right. Nicol Bolas. Those are some of the top ones. Commodore Guff, my question is, is is he offering something that th- any of those decks don't do? He offers red where yeah, where I, Atraxa does not. Karth the Lion obviously also does not. two color. Joda's five color. Sisse's five color. Bolas is three colors, but black instead of white to um, Commodore Guff's white. Asika's five color. Yep. But not everybody likes to do five color, just good stuff. Yeah, and, and I, prismatic bridge to me feels very uh, linear is the wrong word because I don't think planeswalkers are really a linear strategy unless you go hard into proliferate. Right, which Atraxa will do, and pr- Atraxa will also be in your prismatic bridge deck. Hello. Yeah. Right. I think Commodore Guff does offer us. Some new and interesting take. Maybe Planeswalker Burn, because we've got red, and we can just plus one and Emblem Chandra's all day. Yeah. It's probably fine, right? That's not too bad. I think that that would be a deck that you might like. I might. But I know that... I have had a Chandra-themed deck for yeah, a while. Yeah, like That is a thing I have. That's what I was thinking about. And I know not everybody likes to tick dice up and tick dice down. And it's kind of fiddly and dirtly. Yeah. Some people do really like that. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that, and and c- correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that I heard a quote the other day from Sheldon Menry, like the inventor of EDH and Commander. Sure. And he likes dirtly decks like that. Dude, what a dink. <laughs> what a dink. So. His big head. If, if, if the creator of the format likes decks like that, and this kind of supports that, this is probably a fine deck to play. 
Yeah, I think it's going to be kind of neat. I think looking at the the list, which again we're going to get to later, mm-hmm. uh, I think that this one was, while not my favorite by any stretch, I think that it is good in that it's it plays fine. It looks like it's going to play fine out of the box, and there's lots of room, obviously, to upgrade it if you want to. Yeah, there's certainly a card in that deck that I want in my Cascade Super Friends deck. And we'll, we're going to get we'll to that. We'll talk about that in a second. The backup commander in yes. Commodore Guff is... Leori Spark Touched Hunter. Lots of people on our Discord were dunking on this picture. I think unjustly, because I think it's cool. I think the picture is a fine piece I of think, art. I think it's a cool picture. This is Luca's cat friend for my Korea. Oh, I like it even more now. There you go. 3-3 three, three, Elemental Cat for Jeskai. Straight up. Flying. Vidge. Ooh. When Leori Spark Touched Butt Hurt Hunter... Deals combat damage to a player. Choose a Planeswalker type. Until end of turn, whenever you activate an ability of a Planeswalker of that type, copy that ability, you choose new targets for the copies. So you would pick Chandra. Yes. And then you would make a Chandra emblem and make two Chandra emblems. Yes. Mwah. Yes. What you don't do is pick Jace and then brainstorm twice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's fantastic. That would be terrible. But I think, again, this what he does kind of speaks for himself. He's pretty straight straight ahead. Yes. And I think, I believe if you're going to do all Jaces, oops, all Jaces, oops, all Elspeths, oops, all Chandras in a deck, you're probably going to want this one. Yes, and that'll allow you to, to use Jaces and Chandras and Lucas. Uh, no, not all Lucas, but one of them for sure. And wh- you can play all light? the Lucas, can't you? No, there's one that's green, red. The oh yeah, scene one. yeah, that's right. Who you is- could do Gideon's. Gideon's, Gideon's or Elspeths, I would probably say would be your. Oh yeah, Elspeths. The, the oh most, yeah. yeah. Oh, making six one ones <laughs> after I hit my opponent for three in the air with my commander. That's pretty good. That's not too bad. Yeah, that's pretty good. Holy. Yeah. Um, I think though, this one is the backup singer to uh commodore guff yep i think this is the backup singer in a five color planeswalker control deck now yes. what i do particularly like about it and i don't usually like this is the picture no i always I, like pictures. i like that picture a lot what i like about it is this is an attack or it deals combat damage trigger mm-hmm. and i don't usually like those but this one has flying and even though i have to attack with it it's got vidge yeah so i can still block with it and that's fine it goes in your four or five color Planeswalker decks. And if one turn I pick Jace and draw an extra card or whatever, the next turn I could do like a, a Chandra or the next turn I could do a Liliana if it's in a five color deck. Yeah. Tutor for two cards or, yeah. or whatever. Oh, no, because it tutors to the top of your library, right? Yeah. Well, you could tutor for two swamps, put them in your hand or make everybody sacrifice two things or... You know, there's all sorts of stuff you can do. Yeah, I do like that it's a combat damage trigger and that I can pick not Jeskai-colored Planeswalkers. Here's my question that I'm going to ask about this deck in general. Sure. Do you think that they added red to it just so that people wouldn't buy the precon and just turn it upside down and just dump it into Atraxa? Uh, Commodore Guff was a red-aligned character. and Well, they could have picked not Commodore Guff. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. They were going to do a Planeswalker thing, and they just were like, oh, man, is this just going to be another thing that makes Atraxa even more popular? Well, let's add red. I don't think, think that that's how it went down, because I'm reasonably sure that they said we're making a Commodore Guff deck first, cool. and then built the deck around that concept. Neat. So. Yes. They, they didn't do half the deck and say, Oh, what have we done to Atraxa? <laughs> we got to add red. Eject, eject. Yeah. Let's move on to the next one. Speaking of adding red and then not adding red. Yes. Let's go on to... The opposite to, of red. Yes. The opposite of red is not red. In An- Anicthea, 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 Hand of Erebos. I didn't want to do it, but when you did it, I heard it. Anicthea, Hand of Erebos. There it is. There, thank there you. It is. Yes, legendary enchantment creature demigod for that's Abzan and two. Yes, four four with menace. Other enchantment creatures you control have menace. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, exile up to one target non aura enchantment card from your graveyard. Create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a three three black zombie in addition to its other types. Whoa, that is. I like 
that ability. And spoiler, and I'm as shocked as this at this as anyone. This is my favorite of the four precons. I like this one. Oh. I like this. You could put your CCO preview card Song of the Dryads into it. I sure could. And then you can Song of the Dryad somebody's <laughs> commander. Okay. Other enchantment creatures you could draw have Menace. Cool. Sure. That's fine. That includes the zombies that she makes. Because they're black. Create a creature. That's a copy. Huh? Enchantment card from your graveyard. Yeah. You create a copy of it, except it's a zombie. Yeah. So it would be, you would copy its type and add also creature. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it would have menace whenever it enters or attacks. Yeah. So whenever it enters is what that means. That's right. So when I reanimate it or when I blink it yeah. or when I make enough mana to be able to cast it over and over again in green. That's right. Okay. Whenever it enters or attacks, exile it to one non aura enchantment card from your graveyard. Put a copy that's a zombie. So you could get a smothering tithe that's a dude. You could get a doubling season that's a dude. You could get Oh, a... doubling season seems good. Yeah. <laughs> doubling season? Good? What? Oh, yeah. Unpossible. Welcome to Commander Cookout. Unpossible. Remember, remember when we invented that doubling season was good? <laughs> <laughs> remember? Oh, remember. You, you could get grave packed. You could get all kinds of neat stuff. I and think... And turn it into a dude. I, I like this commander. I like now, it. do you put any creatures in this deck? Oh. Cool, hey? Oh, you don't Dude, have to. You just put enchantments. You just put enchantments. And you know what you do? You know what enchantments you put? Oh, but non-aura, so you can't put those enchant lands to get ramp. Yeah. Though you would because you put enchantresses in here. You oh, I guess can. those are the creatures. Yeah. But you can get the enchantress enchantments, like enchantress's presence. Yep. Jeepers, mother ass. How many times am I going to say enchantress? Just several. Several. I also like the art on this. I like yep. the big chain in the thing. I am a f I really, really, really like this card. A okay, lot. Cool. A lot. The backup one I also like, actually. Marcy Fable Singer? Yeah. Okay, I like let me, this let one me too. give this one a read. 3-3 three, three human bard for Abzan and one. Lifelink. Whenever you sacrifice an enchantment, draw a card. Ooh, Ooh. that's the opposite of enchanters because we got black. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Because that play an enchantment, draw a card is green white. Yep. Not today. We got mm, black in that's there. That's right. And uh, you got to sacrifice them. Whenever the final chapter ability of a saga you control resolves, each opponent loses X life and you gain X life where X is that saga's mana value. See, it's another saga commander. Yes. And I like this one better than a Tom Bombadil or what's the other one? I thought there was another one, but I can't think of who that another would be. Another saga right now. commander? Um Golos? <laughs> <laughs> Atraxa? <laughs> yeah, right? Like, but I think that I like this one better than Tom Bombadil because Tom Bombadil, I, as, as I played a couple of games with it last week, is good. He's a great commander, great card, cool deck, very dirtily. Because mm. you're, you're... Well, because you're doing the thing. Yeah, and the sagas are just sogging so freaking hard. Whereas this one, if you saga, it dies, and then you oh. actually, you actively oh. use them to kill oh. your opponent. Don't, don't leave too far yet. Don't leave too far. You could say... It's a slaga. Oh, oh, that's so good. Oh, oh that oh, oh that man. that made me feel good. Oh, I'll see myself up. No, oh, don't though. <laughs> Stay. Make more jokes like that so I can also feel good. So that's where I think this one's gonna be. Cause I mean it draws you cards when you kill your sagas. This goes it, into Tom Bombadil. Absolutely it does. This is it its own deck? Okay. So I think it could be. We've we've looked at a couple backup singers and they back up sing in decks that we already have. Yes. Which is cool. Well, except for Rackerunnel. She she's her own deck. She's every deck. Yeah, I suppose. Yeah. And she back up sings in Slivers. Yes. Okay. Uh no, she doesn't. Just play Sliver Queen, you yes. freaking plebeian. Exactly. Yeah. Just <laughs> this one, do, do you put cards into this deck, a Narsi deck, that just say sacrifice and enchantment? Like the seals, seal of doom, seal of cleansing, seal Ooh, of strength. Ooh, yeah. Right? So make those cards good. See, those would be neat. Yeah, yeah. What's the what's the card that um, you sacrifice it and it uh, it swords to plowshares something? Uh, um, uh, uh, yeah, I don't. Frick, know. soul snare. Soul snare. Snow snare. Snow snare. Yeah, soul snare <laughs> makes this card good because you would um. You would draw a card off a Soul Pass Snare. a thing and draw a card. Yeah, yeah, that's good. There you go. See, yeah. no, I, I like this card lots. I think, again, I think the enchantment deck is probably the, for my tastes and aesthetics, is 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 the is my favorite one of the four. Neat. 
Okay. Do we got any more commandies? Oh, the, the we, Eldrazi. We, we still got the, the Drazi one. Helmed by Zuladoc Void Gorger. <laughs> Do not Google that oh, ever. No. A 7 4 for colorless and 5. Colorless sure. spells you cast from your hand with mana value 7 or greater have Cascade, Cascade. And then the rest of the text on the card explains what Cascade does. Whoa. So that's I a, love Cascade. It's like hitting, it's like playing the slots. Yeah. It's literally gambling. And I told that to a judge one time and she's <laughs> like, I think I'm okay with that, but I can't decide if you're allowed to say that. <laughs> I just remembered that. I think that's okay because you're just playing magic as per the rules. Yeah. I said, no, I'm gambling <laughs> according to the rules yes. yeah. okay colorless spells you cast from your hand very yes. important so if you cascade yes. into a colorless spell they do not cascade cascade we're casting that from exile correct that's how cascade works okay doesn't go in my cascade deck because i don't have any colorless spells other than um meteor no Me um your golem nope the eight drop common eight the 8-8 eight, eight common Cascade guy. That's sure. the only colorless one I have in the deck. Okay, so no good. Frick. Yeah. <laughs> I th I honestly think that this is the Eldrazi commander that every Eldrazi player probably wanted. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think this is the one that everybody's like, yeah, this, I think I'm going to play this one this instead. This is what you do, dear Eldrazi player. You take whoever your commander is, Kozilek, Ulamog, Emrakul. Put them into your deck. Yep. Put this one as your commander. Yes. Change no thing. Yes. For that reason, I don't th really think that this promotes any creativity. No. It's just giving us a cheaper and I I'll say better, but what I mean is a better commander. Yes. The The card quality is probably not higher than Kozilek. No. Or Emrakul. No. Or, or Ulamog. No. Right? With the option to cascade and gain all that card advantage, blah, 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 like it could be a more powerful thing or game action to take. Yeah. But I think that this is a better commander because it gives you more card advantage in a deck who wants to just go hard all the way up to 13 mana to yeah. cast its haymakers. Yep. But here's the thing, though. Here's the trade-off when you play Cascade. Trust me. <laughs> you don't want to have a whole bunch of like zero, one, and two drop mana rocks in your deck. Yeah. Because if you Cascade into that, it really, really sucks. Yes. Although so... in this deck, it probably wouldn't because since your cards cost 15, they don't, I mean, that's But how do you doesn't... get to 15, though? With those rocks that you Cascaded into. Yeah, but you don't want to do that, though. Maybe you do. I suppose if you can get to six relatively quickly... And then you cast like a five drop and a three drop you next turn. Like an, like, you slam an Emrakul's Crusher or whatever. And... Yeah, you do something and you cascade it to two more mana rocks. Yeah. Then, then, I mean, that still puts you like, that still puts you on turn seven or eight or nine before you cast your Kozilek or Emrakul. And how's that any different? See, yeah. like it's the same deck. Yeah, it's, it's It doesn't it's promote fine. any creativity and that's my problem with it. Agreed. Let's see if the backup commander does. Oh, it's, oh <laughs> does it? Because it's not an Eldrazi, so we'll we'll get in there. So, Amarthas Ghostfire Initiate. Oh, that's a neat name. Yeah. It's a zero zero for X X. Enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. Whenever Wait, what, you what was its creature type? Naga Spirit. What? Spirit Naga. Spirit not snake. <laughs> <laughs> I hate this card now. <laughs> Oh, I hate it now. At first I liked it, and now I hate it. I knew you'd hate it. Oh. I love it even more because you hate it. Oh, I hate it so much now. Oh. Fine. Let's just keep reading it. Damn, not snake. Zero, zero for double X. Son of a bitch. Whenever you put a pl one or more plus one, plus one counters on another colorless creature, you may put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Sure. When it dies, manifest a number of cards from the top of your library equal to the number of counters on it. Oh, that's I think that's neat. But now I don't like it because it's not a snake. Fuck. Oh, whenever you put one or more plus one counters on another colorless creature. How did I miss that word? Yeah. Frick. Yeah, it doesn't go into your your boy. Oh, no, it might, though. 
I mean, it still could. Enters the battlefield with X plus one plus one counters on it. It's still a monster. So if Emmerich, or if, if Animar has 100 counters on him, yeah. or infinite counters on him, yeah. this guy is big. Yes. When he dies, I have to solve for how he dies. Yes. And I don't have any reliable way in Animar to do that. That's no. the reason, I think. When he dies, manifest a number of cards from the top of your library equal to the number of counters on it. No, to, um, manifesting is you take the top card of your library, put it into play as a, I think it's a 3-3? Three, 2-2. Three? Two, 2-2 two. Two, two creature. A 2-2 two, two two colorless two, two. creature. And you can look at it, and if it's a creature under there, you can pay the mana cost of the creature to flip it over. Yes. If it's not a creature, then it's just, it's a creature. Now. It's a creature, yeah. My thought were, my thought was, this is another outlet for me to ancestral statue to make Animar infinite big, mm-hmm. cast this guy for infinite big and kill him. Right, because yeah. em- or Animar will make him infinite less than whatever our, the declared value of X is. Yes, and when I kill him, I'll manifest my entire library. Mm-hmm. But the problem with that is when you flip over a manifest, you don't get an ETB trigger at that point, so you Correct. can't like Thassa's Oracle, yeah, or you can't do any of the. I can't um, flip over a Perforos. And then have all of my deck enter the battlefield as a creature. Yeah. If I had a Perforos and did this, it would make sense. Yes. But then I'm just convoluting because I got to solve for Git Perforos. I got to solve for this thing dying. Yeah. When Animar's already a tighter package with Ancestral Statue into Walking Ballista. Yes. And I've got all the tutors and all the play lines to do that yeah. with like Imperial and, Recruiter and Spellseeker and yeah. stuff. And you will not be replacing Walking Ballista with this no this but shitty not snake in an infinite mana type deck where walking ballista is also in this could also go in to completely mill yourself yes and that is worth at least noting and i think that that's freaking funny because it's infinite mill myself but i'll get like 90 dudes yes <laughs> <laughs> neat okay so that's that those are the those are the new commanders sure Shall we move along to talking about the decks themselves? Sure. We got some time before Editor Joe wants to murder us. We'll talk about maybe our favorite cards and the decks eh, or whatever. Yes. <laughs> the time has come, Ryan. Oh, yeah. I'm just going to tell you why this sliver deck sucks. Okay. I'm going to tell you why it sucks so bad. First of all, the mana base is trash. We all knew that. Yes. Nobody expects a five-color mana base to be good in a pre-con. This one does not disappoint. <laughs> Watsy didn't disappoint, but they did. But they they <laughs> very much did. The deck itself is the sliver deck that you're going to build on a budget. Yes. Which is the truth, and it's very good in that way. It's the aggro slivers. Your slivers become larger. They work good with the Grave Mother, where when you bring a Sliver Lord back, you're going to get three of them, which makes all your dudes bigger. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Right? Wow, that's, that's really good. That's important stuff. The deck is well-built-ish. The you, issue being... You bring back a Might Sliver, and they're all like... Eight eights or something? Yeah. Or 12 twelves? Yeah. Whatever the math checks out at? Yes. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Okay. Here's the issue, and it's a big issue. One, the slivers that they give you are virtually valueless. They are worth nothing. Mm. They are worth zero dollars, and it's not all about money or financial value, but when you're going to go out and pre-order this deck for $140 fucking dollars... You want more than a bunch of shitbag commons. Yeah. And what you get is a bunch of inexpensive commons. Even the expensive slivers that they gave you are expensive because of scarcity, not necessarily value. Synapse sliver is not super expensive because it's amazing. It's expensive because it came out in legions or whatever, and you can't get them very easy. That's why that one has value attached to it. It is good. It draws you cards, but it's not that good. Mm. Also, well, I would argue that the only slivers that are that good are the five color commander ones. <laughs> and they're the ones that we've been over this cost anywhere between 60 and $400. Yeah, And you know what would have made them cost way less than that? If some of them were included in this damn deck. Oh yeah, like Sliver Overlord, Sliver Legion, um, Sliver the, the Land. Yeah. And which is expensive. And here's the thing. Sliver Legion... And the first sliver, there's no reason on earth that they should not have been included in this deck. They're great finishers that work super well with your commander. Because you'll get three 
coat of arms for just slivers, which is cool. Mm. Or you get the opportunity to have all your sliver spells be cascade, cascade, cascade. Oh, hey, we did get a sliver hive lord in it. We did get a hive lord. We did get a hive lord. That's a that's a, a another backup yes. singer, I guess. The least expensive of the slivers. <laughs> yeah. So here's the here's the deal. Here's the deal. Also, no sliver hive. That's the land. Not only. Did they not give us a sliver hive in the one place that they could re- reprint a sliver hive? What they did was now if you wanted a sliver hive, they were 5 to $8 depending on where you found them. Now they're 60 oh. Now they're 60 So not only did they not give you the sliver staples that you want if you want to build a sliver deck, they made the ones that are already expensive more expensive. Yeah. Like instead of tanking a value or doing some good for people who want to build a sliver deck, now it's going to be even more money if you want to play all the best cards. It's like, we want you to play slivers, here's the sliver deck, but we don't want you to play slivers. Exactly. <laughs> and it sucks. And I, you I, know, I, mm. don't, I don't mind that, though. We want you to play slivers, but we don't want you to play that, the, that, the sliver deck. And that's fine. But there are several that sliver deck, and we've got, I think, the most approachable one. I don't know if there one. is, dude. Of course there is, because my, my deck is way different than this one. Well, yeah, but in, your deck is the sliver deck. Is it, though? It is. Is it, though? If if you count being that sliver deck or being a sliver deck that has just a bunch of infinite combos in it, it I, I, I'm yeah. equating that to being on the yeah. same level of thing. Okay. Even if yeah. it is kind of... It's, it's two decks traveling down the same highway. There we go. <laughs> That's fair enough. That's fair enough. But the land, I think, was the most egregious. Yeah. Where's not the included. battle bond lands? Where's some pain lands? Where's where's the 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 three color cycling tri lands from um, Capenna and and Ikoria? Yeah. The like, triomes. The triomes. Yeah. That's, yeah. Thank you. Just, it, and the sliver hive just it, it's inexcusable that it wasn't printed here. It's inexcusable, and it tripled in price overnight. Give me some City of Brass and Mystic Confluence. Give yep. me some Tarnished Citadel. Yep. Give me the Tarnished Citadel is the one any mana or yeah any color but three damage. Yes. Right. Give me. Did we get a um, Ancient Ziggurat? We didn't. Did not. Did we get a um, Thran Quarry? Any, no. Any color mana. Oh, that might be a reserveless card though. Oh yeah, that, yeah. Any color mana, but you got to control a creature. You sacrifice it. Yes. That might be a reserve list. Like, there's so many lands that could have been in here mm. that, again, could just bring the value down, and they're not above reprinting City of Brass and Mana Confluence. And you didn't have to give us a $3,000 mana base. You, there was one card you had to reprint here. Mm. One! And you didn't do it. How do you think, if if you're a somewhat um, experienced Magic player, if... if if you were like playing magic for a while and you wanted to get the slivers because you've heard about them or you got squashed by them at your LGS a bunch. Sure. And you've got like some fetches or you've got a couple shock lands and some triomes and, and you have the capacity to upgrade the mana base of this deck. Do you think that the deck is good? Yeah. Like the slivers you said are good and work with the commander. Yep. And we've got like the the creature specific stuff like Vanquisher's Banner, Herald's Horn, Icon of Ancestry. Do we've got the um do we got the one that cares about creature types when you cast a creature? Uh Path of Ancestry. Ancestry. It's gotta be. Do we there. got that one? Oh yeah, we do. Oh yeah. It's oh, definitely yes. That's in there for <laughs> Uncle sure. Uncle Brandon was gonna yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> unleash was... a whole can of whoop ass. Yeah, for so sure. So we we've got a bunch of like pillar of Origins, which is it's creature a, specific. It's a functional deck, and yeah. I think that it play. It's going to play really good if you're if you're wanting to get into slivers. It's a it's a good starting off point. But the fact is, if you've been playing Magic for a couple of years and can build a mana base, that's any mana base you build that is a five color mana base is going to be better than this one. Mm. Just using cards that you have, and all of the cards in this deck, except for the Sliver Grave Mother, are sense. Well, and you can just get them all. You don't need to go out and buy this piece of crap. I think if you were to build a budget mana base with stuff that you have for five color, this is what you'd build. Probably. It wouldn't be better because, like, we can't claim to be smarter than the people who built the deck. Sure we can. That's why they work for WotC and we don't. Here's the thing. We would have put a sliver hive in it. Yeah. And a path of ends or a zigger, inch and zigger. All those lands we talked about, right? They cost no money. Put them in there. This would be what we were going to buy 
if we were going to build a budget one because yeah. like fetches, shocks, and triomes, they do cost not zero. Yeah, they do cost right. a non-zero amount of money. But, but, but the deck is not terrible. What about uh, what about cards that are in the deck? What's your favorite couple slivers that are Ooh, new? Some of them are really great. The Descendants Fury. It's not a sliver. But it's a great card. I think it's an enchantment for red three. Mm -hmm. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, you can sacrifice one of them. If you do, you polymorph it. That's neat. I like that. Ooh, that seems like a very Brando card. Yeah, I don't I, know what I'm going to get, but it's probably going to be different than what I have now. Exactly. I love that. That is really cool. The Lazatep sliver, I think, is really cool. That's the new black one. It's a 4-4 four, four for four, one of which is black. Slivers you control have a flicked two, so when they become blocked the controller of the blocking creature loses two life. So or, it's either like take attack ad attack damage or take afflict life. Yes. Okay. And if you have three of them, they have afflict six, which is cool with your, with your commander. Whenever oh, a yeah. non-token sliver you control eats shit, you amass slivers two. That's cool Ooh, too. You make I a, like that you one. You make a sliver army. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Which is dope. And another good one is the hatchery sliver. I'm really excited for this one. A uh two two for two sliver green one. And it's got replicate green one. When you cast this spell, copy it for each time you've paid its replicate cost, which is multi kicker. Yep. Yep. Everything's kicker. Each sliver spell you cast has replicate. Oh yeah. The replicate cost is equal to the mana cost. So if I have might sliver and, and six mana, I just go might sliver, might sliver, might sliver. Yes. And all my slivers now get plus three. Three plus three. Yes. Okay. That's really cool. I like yeah. that lots. And you could do it with things like Dormant Sliver, where every time a sliver comes into play, you draw a card. Ooh, yeah, now yeah. I've got three of them. Or okay. uh, or a Shard Sliver. Now you're killing everything, Ooh. right? Ooh. Not good. So like, I think that those two are specifically good. The, I'll just to touch on them quick, there's one, the white one, I think. Regal Sliver is the white one. It's a 3-3 three, three for 4. Whenever slivers come into whenever sliver comes into play, slivers you control get plus one plus one until end of turn. If you're the monarch or you become the monarch, so it's a monarch sliver. Also good, like it's good, but it's kind of an attacky attacky sliver, and you've already got lots of those, so it's not as exciting for me. And capricious sliver is the red one. It has the chaos draw whenever a sliver hits a person. Oh. Yeah, that's an attacky thing. You like that one. Yeah. And then there's the blue one that gives them all gold. I don't know why gold is the blue one. Uh I don't know. Yeah, I've, I've never seen that before in blue. But you know what? Sure. That's cool. That's it's cool good, that yeah. it's in blue. Blue gets gold. Blowed. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I got one when I read it. I was like, this is going straight into my Cascade Super Friends deck. I've mentioned that deck a few times this show. Oh, I know We've the card. Chandra Legacy of Fire. Yeah. Is this the one you thought? Yeah. Planeswalker Chandra Red 4. And uh, that, that five drop slot is important because if I have a five drop cascade, there's a bunch of different stuff that I'd rather cascade into than this. But if I've got a six drop cascade, chances are I probably have other like three and four and five drop planeswalkers. So yep. here, at the beginning of your end step, Chandra Legacy of, uh, Legacy of Fire, yeah, deals X damage to each opponent where X is the number of P dubs I control. Dig that. That's pretty good. It's, it's kind of like Commodore Guff. Guff yeah. too. Hyper Guff. Yeah, so if I go like three drop, four drop, five drop Chandra, at the end of turn, each opponent takes three. Yep. Cool. Never mind if I've cascaded into anything. Okay. Yes. Plus one, add red for each planeswalker you control. Again, in this example, she's going to rebate the th three mana that I paid for. Yes. Cool. And zero. Oh, frick, zero. <laughs> oh. Remove a loyalty, loyalty counter from any number of permanents you control. Permanence? Mm-hmm. Sure. Permanence you control. Exile that many cards from the top of your library. You may play them this turn. So that's like each Planeswalker has like minus one Chaos Draw card. Yeah. And that's pretty good with top deck manipulation and Cascade. Yes. Because I can exile the top of my library if I know what it is and don't want it. And I have a Cascade spell in my hand. Yeah. So I can go minus zero Chandra or minus one or... Oh, frick, get rid of this mana rock that I don't need because yeah. it's turn 87. Right. And cascade with my eight drop into something else. This card, this card bangs. It's very cool. In in my cascade deck. I also like Vronos Mast Inquisitor. And I like it yeah. in that I also hate it. I don't know how to evaluate this guy. He's 
on his own, I don't think he's great. Okay. But when you combine him with a bunch of other planeswalkers, let's say in a super friends deck, he will protect your two Best planeswalkers. Ones. They're going to draw all the hate. Your JTMS. Yes. Your Dovin Bond that you're trying to turn uh, into yes. a winter orb, right? Yeah. Like he's okay, going to protect so them. He's he's Vronos, planeswalker Vronos, blue, blue, three, loyalty, five, plus one, up to two other target planeswalkers you control phase out at the beginning of the next um, end step. Right. They phase out at the beginning of the next end step. I guess you... you That way you still have them for your Chandra triggers yes, and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah. Minus two, for each opponent, return up to one target non-land permanent that player controls to their owner's hand. Okay? Minus seven, target artifact you control becomes a 9-9 nine, nine construct and gains vigilance, indestructible, and this creature can't be blocked. Neat. Yeah. Like, neat. It's, it's cool. I like it. I think that first ability is going to be both infuriating and very good, depending on which side of the card you are on. Cool picture, it, too. Yes. Also very neat. Yeah. What about this? Dark Steel Monolith. Let's Holy. go to the Eldrazi deck now. Holy Eight dang. Eight artifact. Indestructible. Once each turn you can pay zero rather than pay the mana cost for a colorless spell you cast from your hand. Neat. Mm. I'm and I, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do it. I. I'm worried that it's not gonna break the format. No. It's not. No, it's it isn't. just not. They but should man, ban it immediately. My friend can cast a card. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, come but on. I just. I just know that that's gonna get abused some other way. I don't know how. I don't have that kind of mind power right now. But I. Ooh. I'm gonna. I'm going to be on the lookout for that. I'm going to kill that a Can lot if I can. B- bounce it and cast it again? And then <laughs> play another thing for free? Bounce it and cast it again? Play another <laughs> thing for free? Is, it, is that how that one works? I, I don't, don't think so. Because it's once each turn, so it probably doesn't see all that stuff. There's actually some neat stuff in that. Okay, uh, well, here, here's another one that I'm trying to abuse. I'm trying to think of it. Um, oh, okay, no, no. Let's finish the Eldrazi stuff yeah. first. Let's talk about Rise of the Eldrazi. Not the set. But the card. Oh, man, I love when they make a card that's the same name as a set. So it's colorless, 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 nine. So 12. <laughs> Sounds fair. This spell can't be countered. So Ooh. you're you've invested. You're going to get the following. Destroy a permanent. Target player draws four cards. Take an extra turn after this one. And then exile it. So that's like casting all three of the OG Eldrazi Titans all on one card. Yes. That's really cool. You get, yes. the, you get all the cast triggers from them. I dig that. And it's got a oh. picture with all three of them on there. And they're just like, yo, what's up? We're back. Yeah. <laughs> this right. is what's, how we roll. What's with the birds? They're running away. <laughs> 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 oh, man. Yeah, they can't catch a break. Yeah, man, they... that card is ridiculously powerful. Hey? Yeah, that's... You probably win the game if you cast that card, right? Probably, yeah. That's... Does it go in your extra turns deck? Probably does, hey? Probably does, yeah. Yeah, frickin' that's it, pretty it's cool. It's going to go in all the Elminster super fun decks that everybody loves to play. Yeah, and uh, Edric's by Master Trust. And yeah. Everybody's complaining about, oh, now I need to get this in foil for my extra turns collection. It's like, or don't. Yeah, just don't. Uh, <laughs> we see just, yesterday's show. Just okay. don't do that. Skittering Cicada? Cicada? Cicada. Cicada. It's got to be Cicada. It's a Cicada, yeah. yeah. Two, two for three. Flash. You can cast colorless spells as though they had flash. Cool. And not artifacts. This is Shimmer Mirror or Urza's um, face guy. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But colorless spells. So you can get Eldrazi with this now. Correct. Ooh. Also, whenever you cast a colorless spell... Until end of turn, Skittering Cicada gains Trample and plus X plus X, where X is that spell's mana value. I like that. Yeah. I like that I card. Think it's, I think it's a fine card. I like the colorless spells as though they had Flash. That's good. Yes. That that's is good. that is a very good card. Is there anything else specific for the Eldrazi deck that's really cool? Balls that. We're going to the, we're going to the enchantment deck because read this. Okay. 6-6 six, six, Flying Trampling Enchantment Creature Demon. Demon of Fate's Design. Okay. Black, black four. And it's a flying trampling thing, six, as you six. said. Yeah. Once during each of your turns, you may cast an enchantment spell by paying life equal to its mana value rather than paying its mana cost. I'm going to play this on turn, I don't know, two or three, and I'm going to say omniscience. <laughs> 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 and then I'm going to say, go. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm going to no. cast everything in my head. Yeah. 
Then oh, you're going to sing. Fantastic. Oh. Holy. Also, Black 2, Sacrifice Another Enchantment, Demon of Fate's Design gets plus X plus O until end of turn, where X is the sacrificed enchantment's mana. One of the things I'm going to cast is a, uh, a Lightning Greaves. Equip for zero, Sack Omniscience, take 16. <laughs> Oh man! You know what I really like in That's that deck? A funny one. This is this is probably not as good, but I like Ghoulish Impotence. Uh oh! Is <laughs> Ghoulish what? Ghoulish Impotence <laughs> yes. is a uh, enchantment aura for black two. I like this one. Enchant creature, enchanted creature gets plus one plus one, has death touch, and is goaded. That's and what that's... the impotai do. Yep. And then here's what this death is: death touch and goaded. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I like it so yeah. much. When enchanted creature eats shit, which it probably will because it's a jerk, return ghoulish impotence to play at the beginning of the next end step. So it, oh. it, the creature dies and you bring it back and goad something else. Hell yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I like that one. This, you know what? I kind of want this in my Lord of Tressorhorn deck. Yeah, you do. It's got when it it's a when it dies it's ability. A, it's a when it dies thing, but I'm using my cards to give you some of my when it dies <laughs> tribal theme. <laughs> you gotta oh, like that. Yeah, I like that one. You gotta like that lot. So fun that, cards. So overall, I think that the cards that are new are actually they're pretty fun. People were saying, oh, they're kind of underwhelming. I disagree. I think that the the 40 new cards from this set of commander decks mm-hmm. are fantastic. I think they're great. Yes. Are there's no Oh, it's game shattering. Good. Good. There aren't cards that are going to blow the format wide open like the like has happened before, like deflecting SWAT and all that other kind of crap. Yeah. Good. I'm yeah. glad that that's a thing. A lot of the times, cards with less text on them end up being more powerful. Like how many words are on a Traxa? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe 10? <laughs> right? Yeah, but they're all keywords. <laughs> <laughs> well, just as an example... How many words are on Guff Rewrites History? Jesus. I'm looking at it now. Too many. I, I don't know what it does because I saw it and I'm like, I'm never going to cast or have that cast against me probably. No. Nope. Now, just to make sure, give it a quick read to oh. make sure that I'm not putting my foot in my mouth. Okay, it's instant for red three. For okay. each player, choose target non-enchantment, non-land permanent that player controls. Those permanents owners shuffle them into their libraries. Each player who controlled one of those permanents exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile a non-land card, then puts the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order. Each player may cast the non-land card they exiled without paying its mana cost. It's chaos draw warp world at instant speed for one thing. For your opponents. Oh, I guess you can get yourself to. It's okay. Oh, my God. Okay. If I said, hey, Uncle Brando, yeah, I got a spell here. And I'm going to go, Guff rewrites history. You go, I'm not reading that. What to do? I say, okay, <laughs> for each opponent, you, you <laughs> instant speed, uh, warp world, chaos draw for one thing. <laughs> and you'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I'll do that. Yeah, I'm fine with that. I couldn't even barely get that out. <laughs> Oh, man. I'm, I'm just pumped that nothing broke the game. I'm happy. I think that all these cards are great for Eldrazi players. There's artifact stuff. There's enchantment stuff. There's planeswalker stuff. There isn't very much sliver stuff because all of the non-sliver cards from the sliver deck are just generic good stuff for yeah. creature-based decks, which yeah. is fine. Yes. It's fine. I would have preferred to see more sliver focused things but that's because i'm a sliver simp and that's what i wanted yeah right and you can't always get what you want but sometimes you get what you need and what we needed was cool ass cards that one of which isn't going to be oh it's a hundred thousand dollars and this deck is so many many you know what i mean yeah there isn't one of those the dark and side effect and there isn't that and uh, i think that's fantastic i think it's called the the umazawa's jeet effect that was the original time that that happened yeah, but I think we, I think Dark Side Effect probably has more impact on the kids today. Yeah, yeah, kids these days. Hey. Yeah, man. Frick. <laughs> well, okay, listen. If anybody wants to pick these up or any of the singles from Commander Masters in general, FusionGamingOnline.com. Yes, sir. CCO Summer promo code. Yes, sir. If you're a first time buyer or created a burner email account, not that I'm telling you to do that, but if you were so inclined to do that, 
CCO Perks promo code when you spend over $100. And if you're buying the pre-cons, you're probably going to. Yeah, buddy. You're going to get 10% store kickback in that case. Doing so will let everybody at Fusion know that their partnership with Commander Cookout is a good one. If you're from Saskatoon and or area, you come to face-to-face -to -face games tour stop. On the 6th of August. 5th of 5th August. 5th of August. There 5th we go. of August. Play sealed with me and or Brando and win sweet prizes and come and have a good time post event drink beer eat food more merry times will ensue yes and it's 100 percent guaranteed that you will have fun so if you're on the fence about coming get off the fence on the side that is you come because it's gonna be fun yes i promise you you will have a good time yes sir thank final you th final thought of the day final thought of the day i think overall these decks while they aren't incredible and they're not worth the price point i would argue that they are priced at i still think that they're good and they're injecting some really cool stuff into the format which is what they're designed to do and at the end of the day i guess like we can't control how much stuff costs we can only control what we invest in and if you don't want to invest in these then don't and let the people that want to do do and we can all have fun together and still get along even though sometimes we're on the internet yeah there we go Big thanks to Fusion Gaming, like Ryan said. Check them out. Use our special promo code CCO Summer to save 5% on all of the stuff that we've talked about over the last couple of days. Let us know what you come up with. And if you know why Sakiko Mother of Summer got new art and nothing else in Commander Legends did, please get at me in the comments or CCO Brando on Twitter. And we are going to be back next week with the answer to that question and so much more on the next exciting episode of Commander Cookout Podcast. Hit our theme song!